there. Today I'm going to be talking about um, men and women um, with some reference to the ideas of feminism and the patriarchy, patriarchy. Um, myself, I'm not sure if I'd regard myself as feminist per se. And I think a lot of women out there, especially straight women, I, th I think quite a few of them would probably, round about now, currently, 2020, this is the year 2020, um, September, I think a lot of women at this stage of the game, especially straight ones, are hesitant to describe themselves as being feminist because feminism at this current time seems to carry with it quite a an emotional load. I'm sure you've picked it up. An emotional load. It's we're at a stage where there's a lot of very, very angry women out there and they seem to have a very stereotyped, pigeonholed kind of character at the moment. You're seeing this is, at this stage, we've just, Karen, is it Karen or Karen, has made quite a name for other women like herself or other made quite a name for other women engaging in the same kind of behavior as she was but what I think is a little I don't know, dangerous but what is kind of dangerous is the degree with which Karen and everybody else like her is being ridiculed. She, okay, her behavior, the, the, in, in the initial few examples, the behavior is extreme. But if you, if you had to offset it a bit, it, it decrease the extremity of it a bit. You'd have a woman who's outspoken, who's standing up for her community, who's, if you look at it in a different way, an outspoken woman, a woman who's not shy to speak, to strangers especially, and in her mind she's defending her community. There seems to be quite an intense backlash against her. I mean, keep in mind, men, there's videos of men all over the world causing trouble with each other, you know, looking for fights, etc. And it's just like par for the course. But these few instances of this woman, Karen and her ilk, um, people are really taking them to task but what's the where do you draw the line between Karen behavior and what well, well, could you actually tell uh, let's just say if I'm talking to a male could you actually tell between Karen behavior and justified angry woman behavior outside of her home now, I'm referring to now the, the patriarchal idea that women's dominion is domestic, should be at home, inside the home, taking care of all the affairs inside the home, not outside, taking care of the kids, etc. The assumption seems to be that what is she doing 
What is Karen doing? What are the other women like Karen doing outside of their home telling other people what to do? They have no right to do that. That's the assumption that I'm drawing here. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is what I've been picking up. Like, So the inference is that she should not be doing it outside her home. She should maintain her role inside her home. Are we... Are we still there? Are we are we still in that paradigm where the woman's place is in the home, not outside the home? I'm just going to come back to that. Are we... Where do we draw the line between uh, the, the ridicule of Karen and seriously taking into consideration maybe this woman who's who's being what's the word she's not being like aggressive okay aggressive plus um assertive this woman who's being assertive outside of her home and is telling people what to do why why do we think that is so threatening I keep thinking, is it, is it because she's not in her arena, in her home? Because, I mean, compare that to all the footage, all the videos you've ever seen in your whole life of men out, clearly outside their home telling each other what to do. You see it everywhere all the time and nobody says a thing about it. It's just, oh, it's just people being people. But a woman does it outside of her home and she's, she's not just a person who's annoyed. She's a woman who's out of her place. This is what it feels like. She's a woman in the wrong place, out of her place, out of place. And this is a, not a lot of, I haven't seen many people talk about this, but it's been disturbing me. It's been in, on the inside of my mind as I've seen like different examples of this and online it's, you know, usually men bashing them and it just feels like knee-jerk reaction against women's assertiveness outside the home. Maybe uh, I was about to say maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. I want to uh, I want to be clear that I am straight. And um, I have a boyfriend and I, I don't dislike men. I don't dislike the male gender. Many of them I love. I have a brother, I have a father, many male friends from uh, when I was like little up until now, colleagues, co-workers, fellow students just friends, ex-boyfriends. I don't think I could ever liken myself to the angry feminist. But there are things that cannot be ignored. And I'm also at that stage of my life where I'm not prepared to take any form of advantage taking. I'm not prepared to tolerate any form of advantage taking due to role misunderstanding or role assumption. Um, maybe that's that's the phrase I want to use, role assumption. You know, like a gender roles, like uh, the typical old school gender roles would be the man's dominion is outside the home. He takes care of everything outside the home. He's the main breadwinner. That's, that was the general role before, right? And then the woman's role before was inside the home, domesticity, the children, and all that. And then she needs to be subservient to the husband. So that, that was her old role. But now these days, uh, I think our roles are really unclear. Like, our roles are unmarked and they're not clearly marked so someone who grew up 
with a, a typical nuclear family in the last generation, someone who grew up with that, now heading their own family in this generation, this current one, they're, they're, there's going to be a lot of mental work going on, sort of reinventing a new wheel, you know. That's what's happening now. And I think maybe to some, they're adapting, they're working things out. But to others, maybe they're, the way they, they think of things is very much constrained by what they grew up with, what was, what was conditioned in them from when they were young. And it's, it's not that they want to be unfair to people, it's just that it's difficult for them to change those lines or to alter those parameters. I think that's essentially what it is. I'll use myself and my uh, relationship as an example. I'm dating someone who's four years younger than me, but he's still of the same generation as me. He grew up with the traditional nuclear family. Uh, his mum was a stay-at-home housewife and his dad was out working. And I've noticed, I mean, I grew up with that too. But when I was growing up, I was uh, thinking a lot of, like, while I was growing up, like 10, 11, 12, 13, I was in my head, constantly in my head, I was always thinking, it's not going to be like this when I'm older. It's not going to be like this when I'm older. The way things were going on with my mum and dad and the way that their roles were, I did not subscribe to that at all. In fact, I probably looked at my dad and I'm like, I, I identified with my dad more than with my mum because I appreciated how he, he went to work and he made a living. He made money, he brought it back and he was respected for that role. It seems... And it seemed and seems like as long as you're earning and bringing back money, you have some form of power. You have people give you due respect. But housewives, though they may do a ton of work throughout the day, because they're not actually bringing money in, they're sort of regarded as very secondary or like they're not given any, well, maybe they're being start they're, they're they're starting to get due respect now but it hasn't always been that way you know maybe they got different kind of respect but not like not really taken seriously if you know what i mean like so when i was growing up i always looked at them and i identified my my, my father's a, a wonderful man and my mum also a wonderful woman but they were in that paradigm at that time working out their roles and that worked at that time. That same role, uh, role system being applied now just wouldn't work. And I remember distinctly at that time thinking multiple times, this is not going to happen. This is not going to happen when I'm an adult. This situation, uh-uh. No. <laughs> because I noticed these subtle subtle clues, subtle hints, small things that they'd say, small things that my father would say, little assumptions, that I was just like, that's not happening later on with me. If I have a choice in the matter at all, it's going to be totally different. I don't know what it's going to be, but that, that was the thing I knew at the time. I didn't know what it was going to be, but it was not going to be like that. But my current boyfriend grew up in that, that system, and I guess probably the male roles at the time, what he was seeing around him, suited him perfectly. It was very clearly laid out. The man goes to work. He goes outside the house. The woman takes care of everything in the home. And I think he was very comfortable with that. Um, because, I, I mean, I love my boyfriend. I respect him. I respect what he does. And I respect his intelligence and his willingness. He is willing. He is willing to change and adapt things that don't sit, suit our current setup, our system here. He is willing to change. But the thing is, 
there are there is conditioning in here and there is, there are thought patterns and thought habits that I can see every now and then that he goes back to in his head because that was his upbringing. I think this is probably not just our situation, it's probably lots of other people's situation. Like in the modern world, men and women are probably dealing with this exact thing in like a million different households. Like what are the roles? And the, the thing with women is that women have always benefited by being able to adapt and to be versatile because a woman, I mean, she's largely in our course of history, you're really secondary, right? You're a supporting role. So to, to be maintained, to be kept, to be wanted and needed, one has to be versatile and adapt to whatever situation is going on in that particular household. But men, being in the superior position or upper position, haven't needed to do that. They've hardly ever had to adjust or change or be versatile up until now. And also the way we think is different too. As you know, men and women think in different ways. Women can multitask and put focus onto a few different things at the same time. But a man, a, a man, a man does far better if he focuses on one point and he just shoots for that and he can maintain that. And he puts a lot of thinking thinking energy into that and is able to fulfill that out until the end. That's why it's probably not a good idea to interrupt them when they're doing something. With a woman, you could probably interrupt her. But a man, if, if you interrupt that course of action, you've sort of scattered energy in quite a big way and it'd be difficult for him to get back on track. So the men and women do think differently. And I think this also applies to the ability to adapt, the ability to be versatile in different situations that require maybe a role reversal or a role change or a role alteration. If, if a man is solely focused on his career and everything, then when he gets home and, and the wife, who's also coming home from her, her job as well, he, she's expecting him to, to change and everything, change and be um, the modern man, you know, modern contributor to the domestic household, it may take them a bit longer than it would a woman if she had to change. But women always have to change. So, yes, I'm going, so I'm going to go with that. It, it seems to be more difficult, especially in terms of thought patterns for men to change their especially uh, long-held conditioning about gender roles. They may not purposefully want to be unfair. They may not purposefully want to take advantage or exploit, but if it's something that the, their best mentor example was doing for the first 15 years of their life, what else do they have to draw from? Maybe they haven't had, maybe they haven't seen other examples of what could be, of what other possibilities are. And men, as you know, men too, I mean, talking to you, men are definitely pack animals. Sorry, pack animals. Women, like if you had to liken it, like dogs and cats, I feel like women are more cattish, like they sort of assess a situation and then decide at that point what they need to do. But but men are very much pack orientated. As, as you see, a group of guys, group of boys, and there's a leader, and they all look at each other before they decide. Before the leader decides what they should all be doing. And you can see this in in social media. You can see this anyway in a bar, in sports clubs, gyms, um, workplaces. There, there, there's a there's a male hierarchy, and there's a male pack or group. So if men haven't even been instructing each other how to do this and their own father wasn't doing this, they're on the front line. The guys of this generation are on the front line and they're looking around going, oh, uh, yes, I need, I, 
things, yeah, we're, we're supposed to be changing things now. Okay, uh, she's doing that, and I'm meant to be doing something similar. Uh, okay, so I'll just copy her. So here's the thing. Men don't have each other. Sorry, there's a fly. Men don't have each other to draw from for experience in this. Men don't have each other. They're not mentoring each other on this. So if you are in a setup or a family or a living group with a man and you care about him, it is you, the woman, who has to show him or instruct what needs to happen. The other men are not going to show him and tell him. So it's up to you. And I'm going to add, this is, this is not just in the home, this is outside the home too. Women seem to still think at this stage of the, of the game that they need to ask for permission and say sorry a lot. I hear so many women just in the daily speeches apologizing all the time. So oh, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. Sorry. How often do you hear sorry from a female? It's incredible. There's so much apologizing. Anyway, we've got to stop that. In this age where we now have the vote, we now are allowed and to work in regular places. We now have a voice. We need to use it. As Sheryl Sandberg says, uh, lean in. We need to use our voice. We need to use our presence. And we need to start instructing what is going to happen. Initially, the men will probably look at us askance. Well, they'll follow it. They will probably be ridiculed. But get ready for that. It's going to happen. It's happening now with Karen. Karen. Poor old Karen. God help her. <laughs> You have to instruct what's going to happen. You have to tell them what's going to happen. And then you also have to be prepared for them to walk away if they don't like it. Be prepared for that. Expect it. Plan for it. And if they, if they decide, actually, no, what, what she's saying is sensible. If they decide that they're going to stay, that's great. That's a bonus. It's a bonus. You just have to think of it this way. If he stays and he's willing to change, that's fantastic. Then you've then you're both on the right track for something stronger. But if he decides to walk away, you are alleviating yourself of years of endless work and mental load. There, there are, there's an uh, article on the internet, you can look for it, it's called a mental load, the mental load on women, that thinking of everything that's supposed to be going on in the home and the house and all that stuff, when sh nowadays when women are working outside just as much as men, but then sh they get home, men are, men think that oh, it's rest time for me, but a woman, she's got to continue because she's, she's also the manager of the household too. So, yeah, this needs to change, but men are not going to change each other. Maybe they could, they, they could support each other. And they further on down the line, after the first few of them have been, like, instructed well and, like, now they know what to do, they'll support each other and they'll train each other. But initially, it is the woman at home, their woman, their partner at home, who's going to instruct what is acceptable to her and what is not acceptable to her. And maybe this sounds, uh, no, never mind that. I mean, it, redundant. It is the woman who's going to be instructing to the man what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And you need to do it because otherwise you're just going to fit into their old paradigm because that's what they have. They don't have any other examples of what to do. The woman needs to set the parameters. Get ready to do that. Start planning. If, if you're young, if you're in your teen years, perfect. Start thinking, what do I want my life to look like? What do I want it to look like at home? Who's doing what? Who's doing the domestic work? Are, are we going to have one person working outside the home and one person staying at home? Is one person going to be domestic? 
oh, we're both going to be working outside the home. And then when we both come back, how's that going to work? Start thinking about this now. So that when you get to the stage where you have a boyfriend or a partner, you have a, a framework in your head of how things are going to work because he's not going to have that. Maybe if he's very progressive and very well educated, he would have thought about this. But males have never had to think of this, this new framework before. They're just going to follow the last best example they had from when they were growing up. So it's up to females to set the new framework now. You need to do it. Otherwise, you're just going to be taken along for the ride of the old one. That's going to be what happens. I'm going to stop here now. Uh, I'll probably continue with other related topics.